Would you like to know more about how pharma manufacturing works? Every month, we bring you an insider conversation with our experts here at Lonza, with our partners and leaders in the industry. Hi, my name is Martina Hestericová, and this is A View On, a podcast brought to you by Lonza. The human microbiome is comprised of trillions of bacteria, fungi, viruses, and archaea. In fact, about 50% of our body consists of non-human cells. And these non-human cells can be found on our skin, inside of our mouths, the entire gastrointestinal tract, even in the urogenital tracts. Our microbiome is unique to each individual and develops over the course of a lifetime stabilizing once we reach adulthood. Joining me today is Professor Eran Elinaf from the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel to give a view on the microbiome and personalized nutrition. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure to be here. So for a long time, it was thought that the microbiome plays a rather passive role. Today, we know that these microorganisms are in fact a crucial part of our physiology. Some are even used as microbiome-based live biotherapeutic products. If you would like to hear more about the medicinal use of microbiome, I invite you to go back and listen to episode 7 in our first season. Nowadays, we see an additional trend in which microbiome is used for nutrition as well. Iran, how did we get there? The microbiome represents, in my view, a revolution because in a matter of just uh, 10 years, we discovered a second genome in the human body that consists of much more genes and cells than the human cells and genes uh, uh, that we knew before. And this huge uh, ecosystem of microbes that uh, lives within us is increasingly recognized to influence the risk of many important and common diseases. Now, of all the many environmental factors that modulate the composition and the function of our gut microbes, our nutrition emerges as the most important and the most central factor. And through the study of the microbiome, we're starting to understand how nutrition may influence our body in health and in disease states. Right. And uh, what approaches are being explored to take advantage of the fact that the microbiome plays such an important role in our health? I strongly believe that uh, one of the things that make microbiome research or microbiome science so attractive and interesting um, and medically relevant is the fact that it is not only important and central to our human uh, uh, body, but it is also um, a genome or a set of of, uh, trillions of cells that can be manipulated in various ways. Now, um, for example, uh, manufacturing and developing Um, bacteria in the form of uh, probiotics that could be given um, and integrated into this uh, world of microbes within us and change its behavior towards one which promotes health is one such uh, approach. But there are other approaches which we and many others are trying to develop, um, including nutritional interventions, small molecules uh, uh, that are discovered uh, within the microbiome that could be uh, developed into drugs and other approaches. Does this mean that you expect the nutritional approach to become integrated into medicine? This concept of studying and proving uh, causality in a molecular level is the one that would ultimately lead to more and more interventions that would be clinically viable and reproducible in being integrated into precision medicine. We will stop treating people nutritionally or medically as a one-size-fits-all with a drug that is aimed to treat everyone at the same uh, rate or at the same uh, efficacy. But rather, we would harness the individualized data which is stored in the microbiome to um, tailor different treatments or different nutritional interventions into different people. And we've already shown this to be highly effective in controlling uh, obesity and type 2 diabetes in what we call the personalized nutritional uh, approach, which is heavily based on data that we extract from the microbiome. And is this a concept of a far future, or do you expect this shift to happen sooner? 
I think this personalization uh, concept will be uh, more and more exploited because the microbiome is really at the heart of this uh, human uniqueness between individuals. And I think this uh, approach, this avenue of research, uh, hopefully in the next uh, five to 10 years, would become uh, a very central pillar of personalized or precision medicine. I see. And uh, how confident are you to see these discoveries translating into approved therapies? Well, I, I can tell you from our own work um, that um, despite the great complexity uh, of the microbiome, one of its inherent advantages is that it is very translatable. Once we reach a discovery that is reproducible and repeated by others, the path toward its application in humans seems to be rather uh, um, straightforward and hopefully uh, rapid enough. Uh, what the future will hold, of course, we never know, but I can tell you that there's a whole lot of effort um, and money being invested uh, both in the research community, the medical community, and the biopharma uh, community in order to make this dream come true. Imagine that, getting your personalized prescription tailored to your individual needs based on your microbiome makeup. That surely sounds amazing. Thanks, Iran, for sharing your insights with us. It's my pleasure. And that's all today from A View On. Thanks again to Aaron Elena for joining our podcast. We will be back next month with more exciting science and technology stories. Thank you.